Hey everyone, before I get into today's video, I want to remind you to enter our Trials of Mana giveaway. All you have to do is subscribe to the channel, hit that bell icon and set to all notifications, comment down below, and like this video. Doing so gets you one entry and you can enter in every single video. Released in the month of April and the winner will be announced on the last day of this month. You can get a copy for any platform that the Trials of Mana remake happens to be uh, releasing on. It uh, doesn't just need to be Switch, uh, and it will be a U.S. copy, so just keep that in mind. Uh, it'll be a digital code. Hey, everyone. I got a couple things I want to talk to you about today, but first off, it feels good to be back, and uh, you might notice some differences behind me, but uh, maybe we'll go over that more in a live stream or something later. Uh, I really want to get into the news. We have a couple cool things to talk about. Uh, one of them is... Crisis Remastered coming to Switch. Uh, it's coming uh, by way of Saber Interactive, who is working on all of the ports of Crisis Remastered uh, to all of the various systems, PlayStation 4, PC, uh, Xbox One, etc. Uh, they are also working on the Switch version, and as I said, they handled Witcher 3 coming to Switch, and Witcher 3, I think we can all admit, is one of the most impressive third-party Switch ports. So... I think it's safe to say that it's in pretty good hands. Uh, Saber Interactive is, is quickly uh, becoming kind of like another panic button in terms of bringing games to Switch. So it's going to be interesting to see uh, how this game performs on Switch, uh, how it compares to other versions, all that. It's just another impressive port coming to uh, Switch. So that's cool. But what I want to spend a majority of this video talking about isn't so much how awesome it is to see another amazing third-party Switch port come, because that's great, especially in an era or a really a time period when a lot of games are being delayed. It's what Nintendo might have cooking for a mid-gen upgrade Switch, you know, like Switch Pro, or potentially next-gen. Let's get into that. And this news comes the way of games radar so as you can see here it says a new switch with a second display is teased in the system's latest update so there was a brand new update uh, to nintendo switch that came out in the past week uh it added a whole bunch of new features and stuff uh to the os and operating system it didn't give us folders like we've all wanted for a while but um there's been some interesting stuff discovered in it and it says it looks like the latest Nintendo Switch system update may include early references to a new model of console with a second display. Now, the big thing here is that it still seems to be an X1, uh, so a Tegra X1. So it's not like a new chip. That's why I'm thinking a mid-gen or like a new type of Switch. I'm not sure here. Uh, the references was discovered by seasoned system digger Mike Heskin, who shared the results digging into Switch's new 10.0.0 firmware on Twitter. According to Heskin, the firmware adds preliminary support for a new model with the codename NXABCD. And if you look at what it says, firmware 10.0 adds preliminary support for the model NX-ABCD. Three of the five new DRAM profiles are for this new hardware type, and there's evidence a secondary display of sorts is being added exclusive on this model. Now the big news from that is Nintendo's dabbled in two screens before, DS, 3DS. Uh, are we going to get a Switch that has a fold-out second display? That is an interesting thing to kind of go back to that. Um, or I don't know. I don't know what else it could be, to be completely honest. Um, popping ABCD at the end of old development code name for Switch sounds like the most made-up thing ever, but it actually lines up with previously discovered code names for Switch and Switch dev kits. Uh, like the Switch Lite was NX ABCA, NX ABCA2, NX ABCB, and the NX ABCC. So it's actually um, like right in line with what Nintendo has done for code names before. Um, Obviously, uh, the new Switch model is that talk of a second display. Nintendo is an old hand of adding uh, second screens of things, but there's no guarantee we're looking at a DS or dual screen arrangement in this case. It could be a smaller screen used for menus or notifications, for instances, a screen on the back so that people on the bus could watch you play. Uh, you never know. Nintendo does really crazy things uh, with, their, w w w with their technology and their ideas. Now, personally... Uh, I, I'm not that excited by the prospect of a second screen or an extra screen, um, you know, even if it's just to, like, display little things um, in a menu sort of way. I, I, I presume if they're going to do second screen, it's going to be a flip-out screen, but I, I honestly don't want Nintendo to go this route, and I, I, I hate saying this to all of you uh, DS and 3DS fans out there, which I am of one. I mean, yeah, I got some, you know, in, in, in the background, I got, you know, multiple 3DSs and DSs. It's just, 
I am kind of done with that design. I really like Switch the way that Switch is right now. And I think, you know, in, in terms of any sort of mid-gen upgrade, if they're not going to really beef up the hardware, which is what a lot of us, I think, hope they would do with the Switch Pro, then I think what we'd rather see is just a more industrialized Switch, a higher quality made Switch product. Maybe one that even uses vapor chamber cooling and doesn't have a fan at all. So get, get rid of a point of failure in the system. Uh, something that's more rigid, Joy-Cons that are better designed uh, without the plastic locks and without the Joy-Con drift. Um, I think a lot of us, you know, could accept a, a mid-gen upgrade that's literally just a more durable, you know, higher quality built Nintendo Switch. But that's just not what we we seem to be getting. It, it looks like, you know, we might be getting more powerful hardware, which, you know, has been rumored for a long time. And it, it's hard to even imagine a Switch Pro at this point coming out this year after the pandemic and Switches being sold out everywhere, including in Japan. And um, so I, I don't know that uh, any plans for that are happening this year. And maybe that changes plans in general. And all of this is for a next gen Switch. But then why would the references still be for a Tegra X1 unless the next gen Switch prototypes are maybe um, just using the Tegra X1 as a placeholder for now till the new tech is ready. Who knows? This could mean a million things, but uh, the code name lines right up with uh, all the code names they've used in the past for various um, variations of the uh, Nintendo Switch from Switch Lights and the OG Switch and obviously uh, the revised Switch, is, which is the Switch I'm using right now. It has, it's just like the original Switch but with longer battery life, essentially. That's the main benefit to consumers anyways. There's some changes on the chip level as well to try to make hacking harder and all that. But yeah, I'm honestly pretty excited um, about any idea of new hardware at all. Uh, this is really the first time since... Uh, references to Switch Lite that we have had any indication that Nintendo is working on new hardware of, of any type officially within the software. Uh, so this is really cool to see that the latest update to Switch, the 10.0.0 update, is clearly referencing something Nintendo is playing around with and potentially getting ready to give to developers uh, some sort of new model of Switch that is something a little different. The DRAM profiles, I think, are interesting in that they're exclusive to that. It could, it could refer that there's going to be more DRAM or, or faster DRAM or something coming up in a, a new model as well. So that could be a reference to higher specs, although there's not really really uh, different clock speed profiles so i don't know what's up with that um and the it, it could be the x1 plus uh which is basically just a tegra x1 that's just i guess bend and, and, and whatever better like it, it's kind of like the 9900 ks where it's like it, it's like the best of the best 9900k chips like guaranteed to run at a certain speed i don't know maybe it's something like that but um i'm pretty stoked and i actually want to know are you guys like even excited anymore for any potential new switch hardware whether it's the switch pro with, with, with new uh you know upgraded beefier hardware better screen or if you're excited for this dual screen concept um are you know or are you just kind of happy with the way switch is with everything that's going on in the world all we really care about is just surviving getting through this together and then you know just having some games to play obviously i think we can all agree animal crossing came out at the perfect time and it's probably even though it was going to be a massive success it definitely helps that it's like one of the only major games to come out of that in doom eternal uh, although doom eternal sales i guess haven't been that great maybe everyone's waiting for the switch version maybe that's a thing like because we know a switch version of doom eternal is coming so maybe that'll end up being a big seller who knows um right now a, a lot of things are delayed um the next game i'm really looking forward to is ninjala um i'm gonna have a video going up on that i think next week um, kind of a, my take on Ninjala from when I played it at E3 a couple years ago, uh, combined with uh, all the some of the new details we have for the game, including that they're doing like a, a kind of a beta test sort of thing coming up at the end of the month that you know we can all kind of try the game out, uh, and it's free to play. So I don't know. That's something that I'll dive into next week. So that's kind of the next big game, big game for me anyways that I'm anticipating for Switch, but. Yeah, I don't know. Um, a lot of people out there playing Final Fantasy VII Remake as well. I've seen reviews pop up for that. Uh, so people are really enjoying that. Uh, Darren actually just talked about it on the podcast yesterday. For those who don't know, Darren's just a, a buddy of mine uh, from back in the Zelda Informer days who talked about it on the Nintendo Prime Podcast. Be sure to go check that out if you haven't yet. Um, otherwise, that's that's what I got for you guys today. I hope you really uh, enjoyed the video. It feels good to be back doing a little bit of something. Um, I have a lot of ideas and a lot of things I need to flesh out. It's just a time thing right now. Uh, I am homeschooling all three of my children that are in three different grades at three different schools. It's crazy. Uh, but today, they didn't really have much to do, so today you got a video. And I'm 
pretty happy with it. So I think that's what you're tuning in. Be sure to enter that Trials of Mana giveaway by commenting down below, liking the video, subscribing, and hitting that bell icon. Otherwise, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Rumpelgents from Nintendo Prime, and I'll catch each and every single one of you in the next video.